my God, I adore you in the most blessed sacrament of the altar. Amen. Amen. Good morning. Thank you again for being here today. I was led to a message Oh, that smells good. I was led to a message that I think answers a lot of our prayers. I know will answer all of our prayers and the questions sometimes that we have in our hearts about what to do. Jesus says, True happiness will come to those who ask for my will in their life. Pray and be patient. Do not ask and then think about it. Small children behave this way. Instead, pray and wait. True happiness will come to those who seek, who ask for my will in their life. Pray and be patient. Oh, patience, sweet patience. It's probably one of the most difficult things to practice these days, especially with everyone losing their patience and the need to have everything done speedily. Patience. Pray and have patience. We need to reach the point in our lives where we can walk with the Spirit of God. When we unite ourselves intimately through the sacramental life and deep desire to the Lord, we could walk in the blessed assurance of being in His will and trusting in Him that if we are starting to walk off the track, that is God's will for us, then we will have a check in our spirit. God will give us to know something is wrong. And until we have that blessed assurance in our hearts and our souls, we don't have to do anything. The world will pressure us. People will pressure. But we ain't got to do nothing if it's not in the will of God. And we don't want to do anything if it's not in the will of God. So, how do we know what the will of God is? By remaining focused on Jesus. What he has taught us, what the word of God says, and by leading a sacramental life by truly humbling ourselves and coming, walking to Jesus in that sacrament of reconciliation on a regular basis with the intention of growing in wisdom and knowledge of God and his will for us and knowing that by his grace we can lay down anything God calls us to. And if God is calling us to lay something down, no matter how scary it may look, it's a good thing. It's a very good thing. Because God can see what's down the road and around the corner that we cannot. Truly I believe and my experience has taught me that even in the darkest of times when I wasn't sure but I prayed with all of my heart and that could, it could be as simple as it is, is, is uniting my heart because I had no breath to pray for whatever reason just uniting my heart to the Lord and telling him in my own way that I'm laying everything down for him. I'm laying it all before him and he has to make the decision because either I didn't know or I couldn't see, whatever the case may be. And the right outcome always happened. God always, always, always took care of me. And he will do that for you. And he has done, I'm sure. Just like Jesus says to us in this message, do not ask and then think about it. 
He's not asking us to ask him for his will and then say, oh, wait a minute, that doesn't make really good sense. Or maybe, maybe I should ask so-and-so. Well, let me think about it. He's not asking us to think about it. It's everything about surrendering. Lord, your will be done in my life. Deep within us, where the Holy Spirit resides, we have an interior knowledge, or should have, if we are attuned to God. It means we, we make time for the Lord to talk to Him as we're walking, as we're working, as we sit in contemplation, whatever, whatever way. We know right from wrong. We may not know all the details, and there's reasons for that. There's reasons why God does what He does. A lot of it has to help is to teach us to grow in faith, to expand our level of trust, which should be always ever growing. But deep within us, when we lack peace, that is a good indication that something is wrong. That I really need to stop here and pray for God's will. Surrendering always, surrendering everything to Him. No matter what. We had a good conversation yesterday with the sisters and, you know, talking about how sometimes our heart wants something so bad. You know? We think we, we have to have something or we need something or we want to do something. And sometimes how we just don't get it. We're not receiving it. It's in those times after we, you know, we have prayed about it, we've extended efforts, whatever the case may be, that we surrender it all. And we remain prayerful and patient. Patience is a really excellent virtue. And we can wait on the Lord. I, I do it like this, if you will. I've come to a point in my life after many different kinds of experiences, as many of you have, that I talk to the Lord in my heart and I say to him, Jesus, my God, most blessed Trinity, thy will be done. And I trust you, Lord. And it's his responsibility as his beloved child. I trust you, Lord, that if this door is shut, I'm going to pursue this path, Lord. I believe this is your will. But if the door is shut, if it's not opening, it's not where you want me to be. And I will wait. I will wait until the door opens for me. Or I'm relieved of something. Or you show me something with great clarity. I will wait on you, Lord. And I will accept whatever it is with your grace. And when I'm struggling, and sometimes we just can't help it. Sometimes, you know, for whatever reason, um, maybe responsibilities, whatever the case may be, we, we're nervous about it. It's then that we really need most to do everything that we can. Cry out to him in our hearts. And surrender everything. Jesus, Jesus, be Lord over this situation. And if the door is shut, I don't move. If it's open, I walk through it. And if you're calling me or you're allowing me some kind of suffering or trial or I'm in some kind of turmoil, Lord, I'm leaning into you and I'm waiting on you because I love you, I believe in you, and I know the outcome will be good for me. We cannot trust any other situation or people except God in that kind of a circumstance. Almost. Because no one knows us like God. Be patient and wait. Oh, yeah, by the way, not everything makes sense either. Sometimes the ways of the Lord are very different. They don't add up to the ways that the world 
teaches us. But we can always, always lean into the Lord, trust in Him, and wait. Wait for Him to open the door or to close it. I couldn't help but think this morning, for whatever reason, of the times in life, uh, the significant times. And I, I was praying about the earliest that I could remember of, of, you know, those God moments of following my heart, following the Lord with my heart. And the special memory came to me. Back in the day, when I was a little girl, probably, I don't know, maybe eight or ten years old, there was this elderly woman who lived on the street. Everybody loved her. She was German. Her name was Grandma Fredo. Everybody loved her. There was a beautiful couple, husband and wife. They couldn't have any children, so they loved all the kids in the neighborhood. Everybody knew them. Well, one day Grandpa Fredo died, and Grandma was for, by herself and quite lonely. She had the most beautiful house. You know, very simple home, but I mean, her grass was beautiful. They both worked so hard for years to plant all these roses and flowers, and she was so proud of her gardens and such. And I was just always, I loved looking at her house and her gardens, you know. And this one particular day, my mom said, okay, you can go outside and play. Remember that when kids used to go outside and play? Play ball in the street, kickball, baseball, you'd see all the kids out there. Yeah, that was a good memory. Hanging clothes outside. Remember when we used to hang clothes outside and you talk to your neighbor over the fence? Yeah, those were good memories. Anyway, with this one particular day, Grandma Fredo was outside and I could tell by looking at her that she was sad. And so I I went up to her house and and uh, she was out by her rose bushes and I was telling her how she has the most beautiful house on the whole block and how I just loved all her flowers and she smiled and and you know she asked me if I wanted to have a cup of tea with her she was all about tea and she had all these fancy teacups like my grandmother my grandmother would do that you know I was named after her so I got to go with grandma to grandma's house and I got to use her most beautiful china teacups and have tea with grandma that's why the tea is so big in my heart here and I had some beautiful conversations with grandma on this particular day though Miss Fredo invited me in to have tea with her and she just said I'm so lonely and I would just love it if you would have tea and whatever and so we went in and she gave me her beautiful teacup and she made these German little cookies that we shared and we talked about flowers and gardens in Germany and you know lots of things and I felt so important I felt so important to Grandma. She was paying attention. She let me use her beautiful teacup. She was smiling and laughing and happy, and it was such a beautiful experience. I was led by the Lord to her, and we were both greatly blessed. I should have told my mother that I was going to Grandma Fredo's house to have tea. I didn't. I was just caught up in the minute. <laughs> and the beautiful time that we were having came to a quick end when police were knocking on the door. They were going up and down the neighborhoods. I was gone apparently for hours. I had lost track of time. My poor mother was yelling and crying and hugging me and kissing me <laughs> and happy to find me that, you know, I was indeed at Grandma Fredo's house. Yeah, so I could have done that a little differently. Nevertheless, being led by the Lord with your whole heart and, you know, ministering to someone, even as a child, but as Grandma Fredo ministered to me, as my grandmother did, and many wonderful women and men in my life, but, you know, laying everything down, surrendering everything, not worrying. And you know how... You know how Holy Father St. John Paul used to say, be not afraid? Yeah, well, you know, it's like the Lord put it in my heart most recently. Don't worry. We're so worried about everything. We're so worried to make a mistake. We're so worried about kids. We're so worried about whatever. We're so worried. 
life is going to continue on and whatever God wills will unfold. And all he is asking of us is our faithfulness to stand strong, to lead that strong sacramental life so that we will be honorable people of God, to love God with all of our heart, to love our neighbor, and be the saints like Father was talking about today. To me, in my heart, in my mind, Grandma Fredo was a saint. My grandma sharing me with me her beautiful tea cups, you know, leaving me with such beautiful memories in my life. And the many people, the women, Anna and Dorothy, who when I wanted to leave the church, yeah, I, w I wanted to leave the Catholic Church. You know, back in the early days of ministry and I got kicked out of one church for stupid lies and then in another church, nothing, nothing made sense to me. I felt like I was Alice in Wonderland where things were upside down and crazy. And I, I was just taken back by the craziness and the, the evil that existed within the church. It was very hard for me to understand that because yeah, I thought everything was perfect in the church. Well, it wasn't then. It, it isn't a perfect world. We're not perfect people. But having gone through all of that, had it not been for those two women back in that day who would call me and say, you know, just encourage me every single day. You can't leave. God has called you to this. This is common for people who are, you know, who are called by God to do a special mission in a church. So you're, this is what you go through. And, you know, encouraged me every day. He took me out for lunch or prayed with me or met me at Mass, whatever the case may be. Walked me through those, those years, those difficult, painful, butt-kicking years. It was an atrocity when I look back now, you know. But in that mess, in that great suffering, much fruit was born. God was strengthening me for this journey to fight the fight, to face down any kind of evil, and I have. Believe me, as surely as God is alive and walking amongst us, the devil is right there, and the devil comes up to the altar. Let me tell you that. So don't ever think that he doesn't exist. He does. Never for us to be afraid of. Never. We've got nothing ever to be afraid of. When we have Jesus as our focus. And we can reach that point of saying to him, thy will be done. If you have to walk away from a church and, and find a different church, Catholic, to belong to, but to remain within the Catholic church always, because it's the fullness of the faith forever. If you have to walk away from a job or from a miserable situation, family or not, and pray and wait and be patient and let God do his work, then for goodness sake, do it. Step back. Receive God as often as you can because it's the greatest medicine that we need as human beings. There's nothing greater out there than the power that comes from the Holy Eucharist and reconciliation. Cleansing, strengthening, feeding. Jesus remains with us from communion to communion. And it's in that that we receive our interior guidance to know when to stop, when to go, when to surrender and let God be God, and when to fight. Because we are in a war. Oh yeah, we're in a very different kind of war, but we're in a war. And it's okay. It's okay because God is with us. And we will be triumphant. So... Do exactly what he says in every situation. 
Thy will be done. It doesn't mean laying down and being a rug and not doing anything. It just means that you're seeking God's will. But you're not going to engage until you know what God's plan is for you clearly. That you will wait upon the Lord for him to deliver you or bring to you whatever it is that you need or that you're seeking. If it's a time of suffering, suffer well. That means pray, release everything, be with the Lord, retreat, retreat, like St. Faustina did. Jesus told her, retreat like a, fight like a valiant soldier, but then there's times of retreat. There's times of backing off, being quiet, getting restored, and then coming back out for the fight again. And it's okay. God will give you everything you need. I promise you that. And the key word, the key prayer, is Jesus, I trust in you. And don't do anything for yourself alone. Do everything for God and your neighbor. If you're hurting, serve. If you need something, give. If you need to hear from somebody, call somebody else. Go have tea with a Grandma Fredo that you know. And watch how the blessings will flow. Pray, be strengthened, and wait on the Lord to deliver you or to give you what it is that you need. If he believes that you need that. But you will always have what you need. Praise God. God bless us. God bless our families. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.